Yo, let me show you the new update. Mm -hmm. You see here now, I can actually, you know, customize my widgets. I can't yet, you know, customize the icons, but at least I can, you know, change the color and so on. That um, is nice. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Is that Kadesh? He doesn't look too... Yes, yeah. we should check on him. Yeah, I'll ask. Yeah. Hey, Kadesh, you, you good? You don't look too... Yeah, I think I'm good. I'm just a bit stressed and overwhelmed with everything, you know? Mm, oh, school work has I'm so sorry to hear that. Is there anything you can do to help? Oh, I think I have one more left. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Here, here. here you go. It'll help you. Trust um, me. What is this? Why does it look like Today, oh, hey, calm down. don't worry. It's just a little edible. It's going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to help you. No need to know, okay? Why? But is it, what, is, what does calm this have down. to do? Don't like, worry about it. Just yes, eat it. Like, oh. Just eat it. It's going to make you feel better. He oh. wants to feel better. I feel yeah. worse. Listen to me. The real-time faith lesson this week is substance abuse and other body abuses. God wants us to make wise choices. Dave and Lisa are siblings. So are Kate and Chris. Both sets of young siblings lost a parent in middle school. As teenagers, they became step-siblings when Kate and Chris's mom married Dave and Lisa's dad. It was peaceful for the first couple of weeks until everyone disagreed and fought with one another. For peace's sake, their parents allowed them to own their very own computer in each of their rooms. Unlike Lisa, Kate and Chris, who had a lot of other activities to keep them busy, Dave was quite unique. He moved to his basement with his headphones on so he couldn't hear anything. Dave often missed family dinner because his siblings thought he was not there when they heard no response as they were knocking on the basement door. In college, the computer was Dave's only friend. He spent hours playing games in his dorm online with absolute strangers. He bought lots of soda to drink and often got food delivered to his room so he wouldn't have to interrupt his 20 to 30 hour game playing sessions. He missed many of his classes and when his family called, he was brief with them. Looking back, he says, I was too busy and didn't want to be interrupted. I just wanted to go back to my game. After he almost dropped out of school, Dave realized he has been wasting his life. He eventually quit playing and got a real life that involved real people. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 8, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy to be praised. Think about this. Are you heading to a successful life? Well spent? A life that you can never forget about? Or just a wasteful life? We have a choice in which we can decide how we will live our life. It is said that life presents many choices. The choices we make determine our future. Living a life of purpose is a privilege from God. One of the most important choices we have is to live for Jesus and devote our lives for him. When we invite Jesus into our lives, he will guide our choices cleanse our characters, and help us to live life to the fullest in His glory. Gossip is an activity that may seem fun to do at the time, but can quickly become an addiction and can be destructive to you and others. If you encounter others who make negative remarks about other people behind their backs or are tempted to do so yourself, it is important to make a stand against such injustice. Those types of conversations can destroy someone else's reputation and can also be harmful to your character. It can turn you into a really negative person. If possible, it may even be necessary to include the person that your friends are talking negatively about into your friend circle.
John 14, 16 to 18 says, I will ask the, Lord, the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. This helper is the spirit of truth. Some people may not accept him because they cannot see him. But as Christians, we know him. He lives within us and he will not leave us alone. He will also guide us into what is right. He will also give us strength to flee from the devil. Just as Jesus did in the wilderness, the Holy Spirit will bring back to our minds words from the Bible so that we will know how to answer temptation and stand for what is right. Perhaps you have heard someone say, I don't use tobacco, alcohol, and drugs. So, what does it matter if I spend all my free time watching TV, surfing the internet, playing video games, or participating in other activities I enjoy? The answer is that, as a minister of the kingdom of God, we are not our own. We and all that we are and have, including our time, belong to God. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't make time to enjoy ourselves. What it does mean is that we shouldn't spend so much time on activity that crowds out time and energy from serving others and building our relationship with God. As servers of God, we are called to be ready at all times. We always have to be on the alert because we never know when or how the enemy will approach us. A lot of activities, even if they are not bad in themselves, distract us from our mission in life, which is to serve God and other people. So we have to stay on God's side so that we will recognize the enemy, be prepared for the enemy, and ultimately defeat the enemy through the power of the Holy Spirit. Ellen G. Wright says in her book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 118, that the only safeguard against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart through faith in righteousness. So remember to stay plugged into God's spirit. I think fried eggs are way better than poached eggs. Oh no, eggs. no, let me stop you right there. Poached oh, hey eggs guys. are... Hey, hey Kaddish. Kaddish. What do you have in your hand there? Well, Everett gave it to me and he said it was some kind of, hmm, what was it? Special brownies. I don't know. I know what that is. That, that's called edibles. It smells funny. Edibles? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, edibles. You shouldn't eat or even have taken that from Every. That could make you addicted and you won't be able to break away. At first, it would seem like it's a good thing but then it would have all sorts of negative effects on you, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. That's right. That thing that was placed in the brownies isn't good for you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, that you do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Oh man, I feel like if I've been tricked, I'm not serving and pleasing God. Oh, it's okay. You have time to redeem yourself. John 14, 26 says that God teaches us in all things. Now that you know it's a weed cake, do not eat it. Oh, I won't. I really won't. Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Being young can be the best and worst time in your life. It can be the best because you are young and energetic, you have lots of opportunities and your whole life ahead of you. At this point, you can choose to be whomever you want to be. God invites us at this time in our lives to choose Him and He will be with all our decisions. If we have done something wrong and we regret it, He is there, ready to forgive us. He may not always reverse the consequences, but he will never leave us or abandon us. Practice makes perfect. One of the best ways to avoid destructive behavior is to practice what you will see when being confronted in temptation to do the wrong thing. Here are two scenarios. Let's see how every Ankadesh answer when being tempted. 
You are at your cousin's house. He opened a bottle of alcohol and says, Hey, Kadesh, you want to try the punch, Cuba? I have some in the kitchen. Just try it. A little bit won't hurt. No, thanks. A little bit can hurt, and I can get addicted, and it can really mess up my brain. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's try it again with Kadesh as the tempter. You have lots of homework and chores to do, but are invited to play video games. Hey, Avery, do you want to come over? Um, we could play some Need for Speed. My parents won't be home. Well, you see, I have a lot of homework and a lot of chores to do. I mean, I can't guarantee, but I'll try my best to finish all my tasks so that, you know, I can come over. Yeah, okay then. Remember, in James 4, 7, God tells us to submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. You wanna, you wanna yeah, want to He doesn't image? look so good. So avoid. Ugh. Okay. Can play some grand to me. Oh my. I, grand.